Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Miami TV. We are here with another surprise today. It's all about sexual energy. So we have a guest with us. His name is Vadim, and he is the founder of Utopia, these amazing events that are happening around the world to basically open up people to sexuality. How are you? Fine, thanks. You're welcome. Where are you from? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> I'm, I was born in Ukraine. Okay, and um, where do you live now? Uh, mostly in Ibiza. In Ibiza. How yeah. long have you been in Ibiza? Uh, two years. Two years? Okay. And when did Utopia came to your mind? When did this environment come to your life? You know, like all my life, like from 96, I'm into this scene, let's say, like I was going to fetish parties, to all kind of orgies. Since you were 19? No, no what, I what? was uh, in 96. I 96, was, okay. Yeah, I was 22. 22, okay. Yeah. And, uh, but I never th was thinking about making it like a business. Kind of business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more like hobby. Uh -huh. But uh, during COVID, I stuck in one very magic island in Thailand called Koh Phangan. Okay. And uh, I, I wanted to celebrate my birthday party, 46. Okay. And uh, many Thailand, people, nice. yeah, many people ask me to make naked party uh -huh. because I was making like eight years in a row. Every weekend I was making like naked party at home, okay. like a like small <laughs> one for like like yeah yeah ten for fifteen friends. people. Yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking like it's like birthday party and naked party. It's not going well together because. It people sounds like my kind of party, <laughs> it's like naked party. You know, sometimes for birthday party, you need to invite people that you don't yeah, want to see true. on the naked party. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I thought about fetish party, mm -hmm. but I think like COVID and it's just 10 days till the party mm -hmm. and like it's small island. It don't have any shop of fetish outfits <laughs> where people are going to find it. Right. And then I decide like it's not my problem. That's true. Yeah. I just invite friends and that time I had like club in Copangan. Mm -hmm. So many people know me and all of them wanted to come to my birthday party. Ah, okay. So you were already working in Copangan. Like I, yeah, I have okay. club nights. And, and how, did the, how did the locals uh, react? Uh, you know, you have such a lot of expats there that like, and locals very nice there. Yeah. And I have like, yeah, like, every, like, um, I have local friends in Thailand, like, and people that like in government, and they like this thing. They're like, open, they're relaxed. Uh, some of them, yeah. Yeah, but uh, do you feel like they're open to it, but at the same time, they don't want to show it? You know, it's like behind closed doors. No, it's more, it's more like two types of people. You have people that like it, and you have people that close to it. So, like, I just make friends with the people that like yeah, it. Yeah, 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 of course. That's your business. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> and from there, you said this can become something big. Yeah, it After was, your let, let's say it was much better than I expect. Uh -huh. And like when I see all these eyes of people, you know, for, for all of them, it was first time that they come into this kind of party. Mm -hmm. And I invite like 70 people and in 10 days without any shops, 60 of them find the right outfits. Oh, okay. And they came, <laughs> yeah, in the middle and of they an came, island. <laughs> and they enjoyed it so much. And it was such a different and beautiful energy okay. that I decided maybe to make it like kind of project. Nice. And uh, I start to travel between islands in Thailand, uh, Phuket, Koh Samui, then Bangkok, and then I move to... One party in every island? Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Like, first 10 parties, I make each party in different places in the world. And is, you, uh, is it always the same people that are traveling there, or no, you have no, always no. new people? No, of course, it's new people, <laughs> but some people come especially for the parties from other places. Like they travel, it, yeah. It, it, it was the idea from the beginning in Thailand, because during COVID, Nobody knows when it's gonna stop. Yeah. So I decided to travel first to show what I, what I had, mm -hmm. like to because I, I was thinking that to come for the first time from some different Thailand or mm -hmm. from Bangkok to parties that you never been, problematic. So I want to make party there, and then when you know what you're coming for, you're gonna travel for it to other locations. Yeah, it was the idea, yeah, and I it's like it. worked more or less. It works. How many parties yeah. do you think you've done so far? Uh, I've seen something around 25. 25 parties yeah. around the world. Where's your favorite location so far that you think people really just like let go and loosened up? For me, till now, Tulum, amazing. Mm -hmm. Ibiza also, like it's the most 
But there has to be location. one place where the vibe is a little stronger, no? Or you, you say Tulum and Ibiza are kind of the same? Uh, it's different, mm -hmm. but I like both of them. It's okay. a different vibe, but uh, um, it's also di different kind of people because yep. in Ibiza, most of the people that, like, the main people that come in, it's people that usually work in the nightlife, people okay. that work in the clubs and they come <coughs> into our party to have fun. Right. And here it's more like regular parties. It's like festival kind of parties that people that they that never get yeah, access to, yeah, and all yeah. of a sudden, oh, this is happening. Yeah. But okay. like one of the things that's special, most of the people that come into utopia parties, they never went before to other fetish parties. Okay. It's like uh, utopia. It's something that, um, like talking to much bigger audience mm -hmm. um, because we. I, we decide to take out like some things and can um, push out people that we want to see there. Like mm -hmm. we want to make this party for people that uh, experience it in nightlife, mm -hmm. that just want something new, that want to add some kind of pepper, like, mm -hmm. and, uh, but we want a lot of beautiful people, we want a lot of girls in the parties, and usually we have Only more girls than boys. <laughs> usually you have more girls than boys? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I feel like women are a little bit more expressive um, when it comes to, you know, fetishes and sexual things. Don't you? I feel like men are a little bit more reserved. Is that maybe of a thing? Yeah. Women much more open. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Uh, because they don't need to prove themselves. Like they just like need that. to be beautiful, and that's it. And for men, it's much more complicated. And for men, like he, m many he times they wrong. they afraid like that they <laughs> do something that gonna look not in the way that they want it to be like uh -huh. okay. yeah, yeah, women yeah. They, they are more natural okay and uh, usually like most of the girls now have this kind of outfits in their closet and they don't <laughs> have place to wear it <laughs> okay so we we give the stage give them the, the, yeah, awesome yeah, the stage yeah, i like yeah. it now i see that you're wearing we have a little collar there i love th what, what would you call this robe like a robe so it's a kimono. A kimono sounds nicer. And what what is it with the zipper over there? Yeah, you can open it. <laughs> I, I can see that. <laughs> Don't open it, please. <laughs> um, so, is there something that you would say it's your fetish? Like, do you like we were just talking to your friends? Like, is this it or is this something it's else? Us, uh, for many years, like I think from 2000, I wear this kind of outfits all the time. Like not. You just feel like it's like you. yeah. I love skirts. I love like and uh, um, I feel that it's me. Okay. Yeah. So it's easy for me to wear things like that, and I have like big closet of this kind of outfit. And how, how but did my you? But my fetish. Yeah, It's fetish? something else. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <laughs> well, can we know what your fetish is? <laughs> um, I love to guide people into my world. Okay. And to show, to show it from from the way that they, they, they didn't didn't expect, and that I know that they're gonna love it. Okay. So utopia party, it's one of the things that like I bring in people that never went to this kind of parties. Into your world. And most of them <laughs> expect that it's gonna be some kind of orgy or mm -hmm. I don't know what, and they come in and they feel in totally different vibe. Mm -hmm. They see a lot of beauty around because we make it all the time only in luxury locations. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of beautiful people. It's energy that it's much more about love mm -hmm. than about lust. So interesting. This yeah. just got really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and, and for me, um, I come in from the sex scene, uh -huh. but I want to create the place that when you're there and you have opportunity to have sex, you have place for it, you have people for it. Mm -hmm. But you feeling that you don't want to miss the time to party because like sex you can have later, Any but time. now <laughs> it's fucking amazing it's, it's party. <laughs> I don't want to miss it. Like yeah, yeah. It's so it was more difficult for you to make these kind of parties. How have you seen the change in the mentality of people? Um, I'm sure more people are coming today than years ago because it was still kind of oh people hear fetish and they say no, you know. So how did you react or how did you deal with that? Yes, I think the, the <laughs> world moving to this direction like anyway, and it's uh, like um, just like moral rules they built for um, to make in sociality um, live in 
the right way. So before we had all this uh, condoms and uh, antibiotics. So really, um, monogamy was very important, important for society. Mm -hmm. So everything was pushing people to this direction. Mm -hmm. And now it's behind us. We still didn't realize till the end why we still keeping this moral rules, mm -hmm. but it changed. Step by step, more and more people start to be open-minded mm -hmm. and uh, they want to express themselves they want to see other people that break this. So, so you feel like you're on the right side of history. <laughs> yeah, with the change. Yeah. I like it, okay. Um, go ahead and invite everybody to your event on Wednesday and the next one and the next one. And um, yeah, um, you know, I always say you have to respect everybody, their ideas, what they do, what they don't do. Everybody's a different story in a different world. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for being so open. Thank you for thank being you. yourself, really, because not a lot of people can can dress like that and say yes, <laughs> let's be on camera, you know. And so I, I like the confidence story. I think that really meant. And I'm gonna I'm gonna live it for myself. So I will tell you guys um, if I if I get the same vibe that he's talking about because. Um, it is a big difference, lust and love, and, and that's where the negative and positive falls into place. So I'll make sure that's a positive party, <laughs> which it already is. Go ahead and invite everybody on Wednesday. Uh, guys, girls, I want to see you on Wednesday wearing the most exotic, extravagant, and crazy outfits. Uh, show yourself, love yourself, love others, and see you on Wednesday. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Stay positive. Bye-bye.